Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, we come before you this morning in humility, asking you to bless us with your word. We pray, dear Father, that you are going to meet each one of us at that point, at the spiritual need and all other needs. As we sit here to, wait, to hear from you, O Lord, would you hold our minds captive? Would you make our hearts alert and receptive, O Lord? Use me as your vessel. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You can have your seats. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. I am I'm excited to be here and to see all of you. Thank you so much for coming. It's a warm day. The Lord is blessing us. My name is Mary Como, in case there is a visitor. Uh, and I love the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior. And I rejoice in salvation. Today, uh, as we have read the two readings, Genesis chapter 8, one all the way to the end, and Hebrews chapter 11, you can guess that we are going to talk about faith. And our topic this morning is studying farm in faith. Studying farm in faith. We have been, uh, we have had uh, uh, a challenging year, but we are thanking God that this far he has brought us. We can see now we are quite a, a group uh, as we as we resume uh, church after such a long break and we are thanking God and this morning the Lord wants us to encourage ourselves with a story that we know so well all of us know about Noah and the flood it's actually a popular Bible story for children it is a story we have heard ever since we started hearing about God and all those other things that we know. But when one takes time to deeply ponder the passage, you realize that uh, there's so much, there's so much that we can learn, there's so much that God is telling us through this story. One comes face to face with the deep insights about God's mercy and grace, about his faithfulness and great love for humanity. Chapter 8, that was read so well by uh, Lelida Rehab, is a continuing issue from previous chapters. And now to, stay, to set the stage uh, back in Genesis chapter 7, we are told that humanity had become so depraved, so wicked, that the only way for God to set things right was to start all over again. So God told Noah to build this ark, to protect him and his family from the most horrific event the earth has ever seen. And now Noah builds the ark and he waits. When it was time, God tells him, go in with your family and the animals. And they went inside. They believed that God was trustworthy. And so though it was easy for them to adjust to the new normal. And they took a day at a time. In chapter 8, when it opens, it opens with, uh, with a but. It's a grammatical uh, item that brings contrast. But God remembered Noah. So we are moving from something to something different. In chapter, chapter 8, we are moving from where we learned that the waters flooded the earth for 150 days. And this is followed by the phrase, God remembered Noah. And the first question one asks, does God forget people? Does God forget his own people? But uh, uh, God remembered uh, as used in the, in the Bible is, it, it, it is a, a way of telling us that God paid attention. We are being reminded that there are times when God is silent but not absent. To remember in the Bible, it is often used to, you know, Mary to, to, to remind us that God is expressing concern uh, for us. You know, he's acting with loving care uh, for us. And at this point, Noah and his family, they have been on the water 
for 150 days and have not heard a word from God. The question is, does God forget us? He doesn't. But we are told, God remembered Noah. We, and we are given evidence that he's been mindful of Noah and his family the whole time. We are told that after the devastation caused by the flood, as described in chapter 7, that chapter 8 begins with that comforting tone that God would do fulfill his promise to keep Noah's family and the animals safe and begin creation all over again on a world that has been made new now by the flood. And we know the story. The flood came and, and created ev ev everything and everyone other than those who are inside the, the ark. And part of this remembering as we see it is setting a wind. We are told that he, God sets a wind over the earth so the waters begin uh, to, to recede. And we see the same hand that had brought the desolation is the one that is bringing deliverance. And that is the hand we must ever uh, look up to. As a nation of Kenya, and as a matter of fact, the whole world, we have found ourselves in similar situation, waiting on God to create the space we need for us to have what is familiar and normal, to feel like normal again, like the old good, you know, way we used to live. And like Noah and his family, uh, this has been so since the pandemic struck, suddenly struck. And the uncertainty uh, brought about the fear of the unknown. We know it has been enormous. But haven't we? Haven't we learned that God can be trusted to keep his promises and carry us through, especially in the middle of the crisis? I think we have, and that is why we are here this morning. I know there has been times we felt God was silent. And we have found it especially hard during those times. But what has made it, you know, what has uh, helped us in all this? What has made the difference? What has made sense? What has kept us going is our faith in God. Our faith in God. Constantly remembering that our God can be trusted. Our God is faithful. So what is the situation in your life? Is God asking you this morning to be patient and trust him uh, with I know our question has been, when will this corona thing get out of our lives completely? And no, God is telling us, you need to be patient. You need to trust me with everything, with every situation. And moving on with the story of Noah, we've seen that God was working. But Noah still needed to be patient and trust God. God doesn't say yes all the time when you want him to say yes. It was another five months before there was any significant change for Noah and his family. Five months. But we are told in chapter, in the chapter 8 verse 4, we are told that on the 17th day of the seventh month, the boat came to rest on the mountains of Ararat. The boat has been floating on water all this time. But now on that day, it came to rest on the mountains of Ararat. And you are reminded something here that God takes us beyond the comfortable and familiar sometimes. You know, sometimes removing all options except one. Trusting him. And there are times I feel that is exactly where we have been and still are. In, in Kenya and in, even in our own uh, personal lives, when you look at politics in our country currently, I don't know whether there is much encouragement or comfort we can draw from there. Economically, many people are complaining. We haven't been doing so well. And socially, like it has, it has become the norm, we must keep distance. And so where does that leave us? with one option, trusting God, trusting God. 
And as we continue following the story of Noah, we know that, like we said, there is evidence that God was working. There was evidence. There is evidence that God was still working, although he, was, he, he looked silent. But Noah's family still had to wait. In this case, it was another 40 days. That's a long time. But notice Noah and his family didn't take matters into their own hands. They patiently waited for God to tell them what needed to be done next. As we journey through life, and there's a pause, you know, we experience this once so often. There's a pause. There's something you want done, but it is not happening. And there's a pause in the action. What do we do? Do we try and figure things out ourselves? Or do we patiently wait on God? And oftentimes, God uses the pauses in our lives to grow and strengthen us as we learn to trust Him. A time comes when Noah has to assess his situation, we are told. In verse 6, we are told, Noah opens a widow in the ark and sets out a raven. And he watches this bird fly back and forth. But it never finds a place to land, which it tells them that they are not out of the woods yet. And this could have been discouraging. But Noah doesn't give up hope. We don't know how long he waited after setting out the raven, but he sets out another bird, the dove this time. And uh, this dove tries uh, to, to, to land. But verse 9 tells us the dove couldn't find a place to land either. So it comes back to Noah. And this point, it is like, huh, the waiting. And I'm sure this scripture is talking to somebody here. There are times we wait and you feel like your head is going to explode. And I don't know what I would have done if I were in Noah's shoe. Maybe my patience would have worn so thin and I probably would uh, do something unwise, like going for plan B, like banging the door from within and calling out God to open. Remember the door had been crossed from outside. So uh, Noah cannot even tell what is happening outside. And that, is what, that wasn't the only issue. There are other difficulties. When I think about it, like, as a, as a human being, I'm imagining of the stench of animals for the whole year. For a whole year, they've been living with cows and pigs and all those other animals. And probably not no flesh food. They've been on water for a whole year. Seasickness and this total lockdown. Same four walls for a whole year. This reminded me when we had a, a partial lockdown and people are just at the end of their wits because they have to be at home at 7 p.m. and they couldn't take it. They were looking forward to the time. But Noah, total lockdown for a whole year. Loneliness, remember there are just eight of them. Noah, his wife, his three sons, and their wives. Eight people and no manner of animals around. Lack of privacy. I don't know how big the ark was. I don't know whether they had uh, a room for each one of them. I don't know whether they had what we call uh, a, a suite where you have the facilities all in one. And the noises from the animals. And you can imagine one by one, there are so many things they needed to contend with. But Noah is still patient. Even though his circumstances have haven't changed for a whole year because he knows God keeps his promises and will tell them what to do next. And so Noah kept waiting. He kept waiting another seven days. After those seven days, he sent the dove back out. And this time, the dove comes back with an olive leaf. And this was evidence that no matter how slow it might have looked, it might have felt to them, God was still at work. That tiny, tiny little olive leaf confirmed to Noah and his family that their trust in God had not been misplaced. And if I may ask you, 
Are you looking for the small reminders that God is paying attention to your situation? Or are you looking for something big? You know, this breakthrough. We are waiting for a breakthrough. And oftentimes, we've been looking for that big thing. We miss his loving literal reminders that he's mindful of our situation and he's working to keep his promises. And in verse 13, Noah takes the next step of faith by removing the covering of the ark so he can get a, a, a better view of what's going on. And he discovers as he looks that the ground was dry and he didn't know. Of course, he didn't know what was waiting for him, you know, exactly on the other side of the door. But he had faith that God was going to do everything he promised and that God would call them out when the time was right. Standing firm in faith. Now, what is faith? In your view, what is faith? Because this is a word that Christians use a lot to describe uh, our relationship with God. Faith, we are reminded that it has two parts. It has the believing part and the acting part. And the two cannot be separated. If we say we have faith in something, but don't act on it, then we really don't have faith at all. James chapter 2, the book of James chapter 2 tells us that faith without a work is dead. In other words, if we just talk about it without living it, then we really don't have faith at all. That was, this was reminding me the number of times I prayed about something. And then start worrying about the same thing immediately after that prayer. But Noah is different. He had put his faith in action by building that ark when others around him thought he was out of his mind. You can imagine the kind of talk that was going around when Noah was putting up the ark. That old uh, crazy man down down the street, what is that that is being putting together? This is a strange structure, and so on and so forth. And they ignored him. And when time came, and God told him to get into that boat, he did. Although maybe he had a uh, minimal understanding of what was happening. He had to get in that boat before it started raining, and stay in it until he was told, come out. That is now putting faith, having faith and putting it in action. And b b brothers and sisters, the ark is a symbol of the protection Jesus provides for us through salvation. We must put our faith in the, ark, in the work Christ did on the cross, paying the debt of our sins. In Christ, we are protected from the judgment of God. Just like Noah and his family were protected from the judgment of the flood. And um, we have seen that uh, Noah put his faith in the trustworthy God to save him and his family. And God is giving us a similar opportunity through his son, Jesus Christ. And it's up to us to act. If you haven't made the choice to put your faith in Christ, what are you putting your faith in to save you from God's judgment? Being outside of Christ's saving work on the cross is like being outside the ark during the flood. And for that, there is absolutely no hope for or such a person. And moving on in verse 15, the wait is finally over and God tells Noah and his family to leave the safety of the ark. Nothing was going to be the same, remember? The old life was no more. Homes, cities, family, friends were all gone. But they knew their trustworthy God was faithful to keep his promises and he would give them just what they needed in their new life as they start all over again. And as followers of Christ, it is the faith we have in his trustworthiness that keeps us move, uh, moving forward or moving you know forward in the new life christ has called us into noah's family was able to step boldly through the open door of the ark into a new life because they had been trusting god and walking obediently all along 
every each a small step of faith was building on what on the last you know like Noah each step of obedience we take makes it easy for us to take uh, the next being reminded that salvation brings joy and freedom this family now on the outside of the ark they remember God who had remembered them what do they do they built an altar and celebrate the one who had done for them what they could not do for themselves. We are told they worship God. And I love the attitude of this family. They know God had remembered them in their time of need. And now they take time to give thanks. And I wonder whether that describes me. I wonder whether that describes you. Do I pause to praise and thank God for remembering me in my time of need? Do I do that when the prayer has been answered or it's just a quick thanks God and I move to the next thing and so we see it is God who remembers Noah and his family and it is God who remembers us and provides a way of escape of escape through him it is God who keeps his promises and grows you know us in our faith Noah and his family took the lessons of faith from their past and applied them to the future. They had trusted God in the building of the ark all the way through to the day they were called out. The steps they took were measured. They trusted God. They obeyed God. They waited on God and they gave thanks to him who had remembered them. And this vividly reminds us that God can be trusted to remember his people. And um, I'm, I, I'm just uh, wondering where in their life are you thinking that God has forgotten you? Is it in your marriage? You've tried all there is. Is it in your business which was previously thriving, but not anymore? Corona has come with its own issues. Your financial status. You probably need a job after losing your previous one, and the Lord has not responded yet. Or your child has been in some strange behavior. And you have prayed about it for such a long time and nothing yet. Or oh, you are worried about retirement. Some of us are not very far. And when you look at your peers, you think they are doing so well. And your mind tells me or tells you you haven't put away enough to sustain you. Or there's some illness in the family. And you know there's so many, there are too many situations to count where we might feel God isn't listening or he's not paying attention to our prayers. But God promises that he does remember us, that he's working for our good and his glory, that he's trustworthy, he can be trusted to remember his people. Let us ju just do our, the bare minimum and leave the rest to him. Let's not condemn ourselves to a life of worry, fear, anxiety. Let's start firm in faith. And once again, we, what is this faith we are talking about? Faith is something God imparts to the seeking heart as you hear the truth about God as revealed in his word. And faith doesn't focus on itself, but on God who is totally dependable. The book of Romans, chapter 10, I think verse 17, tells us that faith comes from hearing and hearing the word about Christ. That is what the Bible tells us. And since Jesus Christ is the author and perfecter of faith, as we see it in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, ask him to give you the faith you need for salvation. Ask him. God is faithful to his promises. Whatever your situation, God promises are yes for you in Christ. Do you need to know that your sins are for forgiven? God says yes in Christ. Do you need peace in your heart? God says yes in Christ. And when you find yourself unnecessarily restless as we wind up, 
if you are going through something that is making you anxious, remember Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. What a blessed um, encouragement we, we get from God's word. It is my prayer that the story of Noah and all that he went through, as we see it in those chapters, is going to be an encouragement. It's going to provide you with the comfort that, that you need this week and build. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for your word that has life. Thank you for the encouragement and comfort that it gives us. Today, you have reminded us that we can trust you with our situations. Father, we pray that you may grow our faith day by day through this word. Would you make us vulnerable enough so that we can fully submit to you and your will? Once again, thank you for reminding us that our situations are in your hands and we can trust you. In Jesus Christ, we pray and believe. Amen. Amen.